Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Aviation Design Diamond Build. So this video is going to be a bunch of miscellaneous things. They're important, but we're not doing big steps like the gear install and things like that. But we will be focusing on the other side of the wing wiring. We'll get that stuff completed. There's lots of other things we need to do. We're going to be putting hooks on the canopy. We'll be doing the gear or the, the startup plate. And a large portion of this video will be organizing the equipment install for the diamond. So thanks guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, list them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button guys. It's free to do so. Please do so. And also give the video a thumbs up. Let's dive in to this beautiful aircraft. All right guys, we had an awesome package show up today from Sky Candy Landing Lights. Been waiting for this for a little while and uh, we're gonna open this thing up and see what's inside. Now, obviously this is for the Aviation Design Diamond and really looking forward to this package. Thank you, Sky Candy. Thank you, Sal, for putting this together. Just a little plug for Sky Candy Landing Lights, guys. If you go to their website, uh, skycandylandinglights.com, I believe. If you go on Facebook and look up Sal or Sky Candy Landing Lights, Go to their website and they've got some very basic things on their website. But if you contact Sal, he will put custom packages together for you and your plane. So let's open up this package, see what's inside, plug it in, and I'll show you how amazing this light set is. So we got some goodies. We'll be giving that stuff away. Make sure you guys keep an ear out for that. And we've got the whole setup here. So we've got our nav lights. Now I'll, I'll open this up and explain it to you guys. We've got our nav lights there. So we've got our rear flasher. We've got our red and green. We've got our strobe that goes on the belly of the, the airplane. Everything's packaged. All of the light kits, they're all ready to go. They're all plug and play and very, very well made, well put together. So we've got the nav lights. We've got our landing lights. So in this package, we've got three. So we've got one for each wingtip, one for the center vertical stab, and there's also one more coming for the front gear. So that's the nav or landing lights. We've got the lighting wire harness. So Sal did this up for me as well, and everything's ready to go and basically plug and play. Awesome. A couple templates for the nose cone pieces. And we've got a bunch of the nose cones themselves. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna open all this stuff up. We'll lay it all out and we'll get it set up so we can take a look at it. Okay, so if you look at the way the harness is laid out, we've got our battery input. Now this light kit is designed to run off of a, a three cell LiPo. Okay, right there, 11.1 .1 volts. So a three cell LiPo and that'll make more sense in a second. With the Sky Candy landing lights, these all need to run at 4.8 volts, no, no more than 6 volts. So that's why they each have their own regulator. We'll get into that in a, in a second here. Okay, so we've got our, our battery input there. We've got our landing lights. Okay, so three lights. Okay, we've got our RX inputs. So this is our two channels. And we've got our strobe for the rear, our belly beacon and green and red. So very well laid out harness system. It's gonna make that real easy to put into the plane. Thank you. All right, so we've got our landing lights. These all face forward. And the one we don't have right now is the landing gear one, which is gonna be, like I said, coming. So each one of these is individual and we've got our own um, 10 amp Castle Creations voltage regulator on each one of these, which is very, very cool. So this setup here is gonna go in each wing tip and this plugs into the servo connection that I've already wired into the system. So we've got three of these guys. We've got our nav lights. Okay, so green and 
uh, red. And those are running at three cell LiPo or 12 volts. We've got our belly beacon. That little blue thing on there is just a, a little protective cover. The black piece is actually sitting on the inside of the airframe. So basically you'll have that portion sticking out of the bottom of the airframe. And there's a whole crap load of LEDs inside that thing. Now this nav light is the rear flasher. So this goes in the rear cone. And this one is a little bit different. It's been machined down. So this is one of those custom things that uh, Sal did up for me. And you can see the difference. The little, uh, the little cone thing is machined off of it. Okay, and the other thing with this one you'll see is we've got a, a special flasher. And when I plug this all in, you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna get this all, all set up, hooked up to a receiver and a battery, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, guys, so we've got everything basically plugged in, ready to go. We've got my transmitter on, and we've got the receiver on. Now, one important thing with the Sky Candy landing light setup is you have to make sure that you plug the or turn the radio system on first before you supply power to the light system. And then when you shut your plane down, you either flick the switch or you disconnect the battery for the light system, and then you turn your receiver off. That's an important thing just because of the digital switches that are in there. Okay, so we're gonna connect this together. Holy. So I've got this set up on my gear channel and also on the throttle channel. <laughs> wow, those are bright. Holy man, that's crazy. And gear and throttle. <laughs> that's cool. All right, different perspective for you. So throttle channel, that's the nav lights. <laughs> and the, I'll tell you, the camera does not pick this up. That is mental how bright that is. I can't even look at it anymore. And then the nav lights are insanely bright. That's super cool. That's the rear flasher. So we'll turn those guys off. And gear switch is the landing lights. So the three landing lights, plus there'll be another one on the front nose strut. Oh man, that's crazy. Sal, thank you. You outdid yourself. You built a beautiful light kit. So guys, we are going to do a install just on the light kit because we've got the wingtip covers and stuff like that to deal with. So um, that'll be in its own entire video. So looking forward to doing that. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to seeing that. Um, this plane is gonna look absolutely amazing with that light kit installed. Thanks, Sky Candy. So end of last video, guys, I showed you the front plate that I made. Here's a shot of it outside of the aircraft. Now, when doing something like this, where it's a little bit of a struggle to get to once it's in the aircraft, my suggestion to you is try and get everything done that you can outside of the aircraft. So specifically what I mean by that is we did the, the, the fuel tubing from the UAT to the fuel pump. We put our four millimeter line on, which is gonna feed the turbine. And this is plenty of line to go from the front section all the way back to the turbine but we are going to be stopping on the startup plate that we're going to install here because we've got our on-off valve, fuel filter, things like that. So, But that's plenty of four millimeter line to go all the way towards the back of the aircraft. And all those lines have been tie wired. Now, this sharp bend in the eight millimeter line, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. The tubing has great structure to it, so it it uh, is not going to compress or fold in the bend. So that's one of the things I definitely checked for. The only other things we have to hook up to the UAT, this is the line that's gonna come from the tanks. So we're gonna come here and then we're gonna split with a T into both tanks. And this is your fill line on the UAT where you actually install fuel into the system. So that stuff's good. The rest of the connections here are fairly easy because they're just power and servo connections. 
So this portion is essentially done. I'm not going to be adding anything else as far as I know onto the front gear plate. So I'm just taking the wing off to deal with the wiring and I just thought I'd show you guys the counter sunk sink I did on the main wing bolt. I just took my drill bit, took the bolt out and just drilled the skin and it worked beautifully. All right guys, so we're gonna put a grommet in the airframe to run the wires through. So what I wanna do is come to the center of this opening so we got plenty of room for the connectors to go into the wing. So that's about 70 millimeters forward of the wing tube. So then what I'll do is I'm going to measure 70 millimeters forward of the wing tube. And then we also want to be in line with the center here because that'll put us in the middle of the opening. Then we're going to take my align all and we're going to open this up to the 12 millimeter point. Because this opening also is the match to the wing, you don't want to go too aggressive on this, so use a drill bit. Uh, if you're going to use a drill bit, you need to be very careful. And then we take our grommet and we insert it into the hole. Now it's going to be a snug fit, which is kind of what you want, or you want it to be a bit of a challenge to get in there. So the best solution for that is a trusty bent screwdriver. Oh, I'll take one step back here for a second. So the actual dimension on the grommet right here is 10 millimeters. The hole opening is 12. We need it to be a little bit bigger just to get the end of the grommet in. All right, guys, so now we've got the other end of the connector to do up on both sides. And what I did was I inserted a piece of wire into the hole, ran it where I needed to route it to make sure I had the right length. And I've cut 12 pieces of power box wire, six per side for the wiring harnesses. And just a FYI, as of right now, I'm not done the wiring yet, but I've used 100 feet of power box servo wire in this plane and I suspect we'll still use more. All right guys, wiring harnesses are all made up. These are the pieces that will be sticking out of the airframe. Now the reason I use shrink tubing on this, I will show you in a second why. Okay, I'll just get this shrunken down and then I'll show you why. Okay, so I did the other wing already, but the nice thing about the shrink tubing is it fits beautifully in the grommets. Okay, so it is just a nice fit, keeps things all separate, and works good. All right, so next we're working on the tanks. The hardware that uh, came with the tanks is the standard, uh, normal kind of hardware that we're used to with the normal size tubes. So I'm going to switch this stuff out for some high flow units. Now I had to open up the opening in the tank in order to fit the insert in. And then we've got the high flow inserts which thread in. Now when you put these things together, when you order them, both of the nipples are loose and you use Loctite to thread them into the aluminum piece. And then when you put this together into the insert, you don't use any sealant. All I do is put a little bit of silicone oil on the O-ring and you thread it in. Now when you put this in the tank, when you glue this in, you're gonna use Hysol and you want to make sure that the o-ring flat area is facing the outside of the tank. Okay, so this part, the bigger area on the side, is going to get screwed into the tank. And then I'm going to use 90 degree nipples on the top. I believe these are Festo nipples that I ordered. And I just took the nut and washer and everything off the bottom. So I used a step drill to, to drill the hole. I found that when you use the step drill, of course the Kevlar goes all over the place and then all I do is put some CA on the Kevlar, spray it with some kicker, and then I'm able to sand it down a lot easier. But this threads into there, so I'm going to put some high sole on there, thread this in, 
and then we'll seal up around the base and then again we'll install this in both of the tanks and let that cure. And both tanks are sitting vertical curing, just so those pieces don't fall out. And they worked out good. So thank you to Bob, my buddy, for hooking me up with the Karf felt clunks. Um, I want to go with the felt clunk, mainly because of the tank tanks being run in parallel. So both tanks, are going to come to a T and then that T is going to go to the UAT. So one thing with the felt clunks from Carf. now we're probably okay with these ones because we are, yes, we have a 210 engine, but it's drawing from both tanks. But uh, one thing I like to do with these Carf clunks is to drill out the center hole. So you can see the size of it there and you can use a drill bit and basically drill this out to the size of that center little bump there. And what I'll do is drill these things out and I'll drill it all the way down to the very end. And that just allows a larger bore, bore size on the clunk and it works beautifully. Now I know some people don't like using felt clunks. I've had one of these in my Tudor since day one. So that plane is about seven, eight years old now on the Carf Tutor, has well over 300 flights, a lot of them not done by me, and it's the exact same Carf felt clunk that's in there, and it works beautifully. Great setup. So that's what we're going to use in the diamond tanks. All right, so we've got a 1 8 drill bit. We've got the center part of the Tillerson clunk mounted in my bench vise. Drill press vise, I'm not sure what that's called. Anyways, let's drill it out. There we go. And we'll do the other one exactly the same. And I'll just show you the difference in bore size here. So obviously the drilled out one is on your left. The non-drilled out is on the right. So big difference in size. And when you do drill these out, you just want to go back and clean up all the metal shavings on the inside from drilling out the center section. And I'll just use a file or an X-Acto knife, but you just want to get rid of all those little pieces. All right, guys, so we're going to be using this large bore black tubing. I forget the name of it, but anyways, I got it from DreamWorks and it's smoke, gas, diesel compatible, and it's nice and flexible. So this large bore tubing fits over the large um, fittings of the tank. And the only thing I didn't check, yeah, it'll work over the clunks as well, which is good. Now, this is the stock fuel um, tank setup stiff tubing. So there's one of these that goes in the center of the, the clunk. The only problem is this is way too big for this tubing. So I've got some quarter inch stainless steel tubing and I cut two of these pieces to exactly the same length. You can see the bore size difference is significant. So this one actually fits right inside the stainless steel tubing. This is quarter inch size, and this will be a nice fit over top of this tubing. So we're gonna use these pieces instead. Now, the one thing when you're setting up tanks in parallel like this, is you want everything to be exactly the same. So what I did is I had this long piece of quarter inch tubing. So I actually cut my pieces from both ends of the tubing. And the reason for that is the factory uh, cut tubing is nice and open on the ends. And then when you use a pipe cutter, it actually squishes the tubing down a little bit. So I used both ends of the factory tubing. So I'd have one of each end, right? And all my, my plumbing and everything, you want your pipes to be exactly the same size. So the 
pull from both tanks is equal. That's the goal. All right, guys, there is both clunk lines completed. They're exactly the same length. It's hard to tell because the bend on them, but they are exactly the same length. They are tie wired in almost the same spot and everything is equal. Now on the ends here, I like to do these double fuel line crimps. So all I do is cut a, a thin piece of the same fuel line, stick it over the end of a pair of needle nose pliers, spread it out, and then insert the other tube inside the small piece of tube. And then when you push it over your clunk, then it will hold that in place. And it also prevents this felt piece from moving down at all. So those are ready to install. We're still waiting for the high saw to cure. It is firmed up, but it is starting to cure. Once these are cured, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to clean the dust out of the tanks. So I just use rubbing alcohol, put a bunch in there, dump it out, put a bunch in there, dump it out, and do the same thing to the other tank. Once we assemble these tanks with the clunk lines, then we will do a leak test and make sure that there's no holes. All right guys, working on the equipment tray or the startup tray as I call them. And this is where we're gonna put it. So I've sized this tray to fit there. So that's how it's gonna work. <clears throat> Once I got my plywood cut out, then what I did was cut a piece of this plastic ABS material and we are gonna spray glue these pieces together. Talked about this in my other videos, but basically automotive adhesive, you can get this pretty much any, any store. And you wanna spray the wood, then you spray the back of the plastic material, you let it set up so it's dry, like contact cement, and then you stick it together. So we're gonna get that done. All right guys, been working on the equipment tray or the startup tray for the past couple hours here, just getting things laid out. So I showed you, of course, the two pieces. We got those stuck together. Now what I like to do is there's this plastic film over top of the plastic carbon. So I leave that on and do all my mock-ups and drilling and all that kind of stuff so I don't scratch it. Um, anyways, everything's done and we're ready to go with this. So the only thing left that I wanna do is I wanna get the at least um, two or four of the screws going through the fuselage set up so we're at least lined up on our marks that I made. Once we get those drilled and installed, then I'll peel the film off and then we'll install everything in the tray. All right, so I've fastened the plate down. I just ended up doing all the screws. And now what I'm gonna do is take this apart and pull the film off and start installing all of the items on the board. We also have to add some countersink holes on all of these because we can't have them sticking up and affecting how the canopy sits against the airframe. All right guys, tray is all done. I um, need to put the fuel tubing between the filters and the on off valves. And then over in this area, I'm just going to drill a hole back here and then the tubing, uh, the fuel tubing, smoke tubing is just gonna go down through the hole. Thank you, Joe, my buddy who does my 3D printing for printing these valves. Uh, he sent me one of these in the mail just to take a look at, and I picked up the other one that he sent to Chad. And very, very cool fuel valves, uh, on-off valves. They work great. And he actually includes this little drill template as well too, which is perfect, because you got the three fastening bolts and then the two that you need to drill for the fixing bolts to go in and through. So. Absolutely awesome, thank you. And that's what that looks like, guys. So next we're gonna do the countersinks in the fuselage bolt holes. All right, guys, so next thing I'm working on is the gap here. Now, when I added this plate in here, it stiffened this whole section up. So when you put the canopy on now, it actually opens up the front section on the airframe. So ideally what I wanna do is have some, and I was gonna do this before anyways, but I wanna have some hooks that as you put the canopy in place, the hooks clip in place as well too. Um, previously, when the um, startup plate wasn't there, I mean, there was enough flex in the entire thing that when you put the canopy on, this was sitting tight, 
but it was actually open a little bit back here. So I was gonna put the clips further back, but now I'm gonna put them further forward. So I'm gonna kind of get this figured out and I'll show you guys the process of uh, doing that. All right, so what I have, I think I've shown you these things before guys, is these hooks that came from a carf kit. And anyways, these are what we're gonna use on the canopy. So they're gonna sit like this and they've got the bevel on them. And then the part that goes inside the airframe as it moves forward is gonna tighten up. That's gonna be a little bit tricky to get lined up, but I'm sure we can figure that part out. So I've sanded out two of these spacers or support pieces that are gonna go on the back side like this. And then the hook goes in this side and we're gonna high saw that all together. Now, one of the things with the canopy is you can't do these hooks and follow the angle of the canopy like this. Okay, if you did that, when you clip it in, uh, there's a good chance that it is gonna be a bit of a struggle. So this part basically has to move straight forward. So I've transferred the line from back here down with a paint marker on both sides just so I have kind of a straight straight line to work with and that's what we're doing so I'm going to glue one each one of these in at a time just to get this spaced out and what I'm going to be doing is putting the wood that I'm going to put on the inside of the airframe like this I'm going to add a few layers of tape on there to give myself some extra space and kind of figure out my spacing that way and I'm gonna use the five minute high saw just so it kind of cures quickly and I don't have to hold it for a long time. But then I have to do both at separate times just so I'm um, not fighting with both of them as the high saw is curing. All right, so I'll zoom in on that for you guys. So basically I've got it all, it's still loose. So I've got it all temporarily put in place. So this is my spacer I'm using. I'm just looking at it visually, making sure that this is relatively straight up and down compared to the, the canopy. So we're at a perpendicular line there. It looks pretty stinking close. And from the top, we are following the white line. So I'm gonna let that cure. And while I'm letting that cure, I'm gonna clean the stuff out of the tanks because that is all cured now. So. I don't know if we'll be able to, if you look in the bottom of the tank there, there's always some dust in there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how you clean it out, vacuum it out, blow it out, all that kind of stuff. You need to actually put liquid in there and dump the liquid out. So I'm just gonna use rubbing alcohol, pour it in there, swish it around, clean it out, and then I'm gonna put the clunks in the tanks. All right, guys, so I used 500 milliliters, half a liter in each tank of rubbing alcohol, dumped it in there, shook it around. Put, well, I put about a third of it in there, shook it around, dumped the rest in there, shook it around, and did that to both tanks. Now what I'm gonna do is take the clunks that I made up, the whole fuel system, put a little bit of lubricant on the O-ring, and install these in both of the tanks. Uh, I've done the first side over here with the little hook. Just glued the second side up, and what I did was, this one's cured over here, so I took my calipers, measured from the tip to the base, made sure this one matched up, so we've hopefully got the right angle on both of them. All right, guys, I am going to try and share all of the steps with the canopy with you so it, you understand. So step number one was take those hooks, make backer plates, install them so they're following a straight line, and they're also even. Step number two was take some of this plywood. Um, I would guess this is about quarter inch ply. And I sanded it down to an angle. So basically we're, we sanded half of one of the ribs off here and we came down to three remaining. Using the ribs, I'm talking about those little laminate pieces. Now the reason I put the angle on there is so we can get a little bit more depth, okay? That was step number two. And we've got a matching pair, basically, of, of those things. So step number three was take the canopy, put it on the airframe, 
Now when you put this canopy on, the front kind of clips in and then it slides forward. So right now I'm all the way back, but it's still just starting to clip itself in. So it was a bit of a balancing act to find out kind of where I wanted to go, where I could go, I guess, but we're somewhere about there. Then I got the canopy centered side to side on the airframe like that. And then what I did was mark the front of the hook and the back of the hook because those are that's going to be the actual opening that we cut in the airframe for the hook to actually go into. And then what I did was slide the canopy all the way forward until it stops and mark the front of the hook. So now we know how much travel we have here. And then now if we take the piece of wood plus a piece of really, really thin ply, that's the same thickness as the airframe, put those together, slide that back, okay? So now if we go like that, measure this, okay, we're at 10 millimeters. 10.6, but 10 millimeters of travel between where the hook would start on the front of the wood to where it starts to tighten up. So we've got 10 millimeters of travel in that distance there. And then we can come here, take a look at this, and basically figure out where our wood needs to go. Okay, so the end of the hook, right, all the way forward is here. So if we go 10 millimeters forward, and that should be the edge of our wood. So basically, we need to do the opening where the hook goes in, and then glue the wood to the underside of the airframe with that much space. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to mark the edge of the hooks so we know where to actually grind the hole. So we use the paint marker. It's not right on the edge, but at least we know we are very, very close. All right, so I've glued a thin piece of ply from here, from the forward line, back to about here, that's just for additional support around the hole. And then I glued that angled piece, the quarter inch ply, from that line forward. And we've high sawed all those pieces in place. So those are curing. Other thing I've done is the tanks. So the, the clunks are in. Um, when you're pressure testing a tank, you can dip it in water. You don't need to though if you've got time. So I just put two pieces of Festo tubing on there, clamped off one of them. Don't do this through the bung, by the way, because you'll get uh, usually some liquid in your mouth. So I'll clamp this one off, put my mouth around this one, blew some air in there so it's a little bit pressurized, you don't need to go crazy, and then clamp it off with my forceps. And you can wait overnight or you can wait a couple hours and you know, tomorrow morning if I release this and air comes out, then it's good. All right, guys, it's the next day and it's been about 24 hours since we pressurized this tank. I can still feel that there's pressure in there, but I'll show you what we're looking for here. There we go. So it released its pressure. So we're good on that tank. We'll do the same thing on the other tank. Okay, so I took my Dremel bit and Dremeled my channels and I've done some test fitting here and everything looks like it fits really, really well. Um, I think it's pretty imperative that you put the extra support underneath here if you're going to do this because um, there's quite a bit of flex in the actual fiberglass itself, fiberglass carbon layup, so this just gives it a bit more structure, especially on that little thin piece there. So I'm just going to do a bit of adjustments on this, but it fits really, really well, and I'm just going to open up the channel uh, that way on this one side a little bit, and we'll see how she fits. All right, guys, so the little piece of wood that I had underneath here, I was just playing around with this and it just peeled right off. I think it's because the wood was too flexy. 
Um, I also didn't sand this area as well too when I stuck it on. The big pieces of wood, they seem to be doing just fine. And I don't know what the difference is, but the wood is the only thing that's different. So obviously the quarter inch ply is not as flexy as those thin pieces of wood. So I have this carbon fiber strip material that I bought quite a while ago. And it's quite thin, just like the wood that I just had, but it's obviously a lot more stiff. Now, the one thing about this is it's pretty much the right width. So I'll basically what I'm gonna do is glue these into place right there, and then we'll have to re-cut um, the openings. But I'm gonna glue this on with my normal high saw, the 9462, I think. And I also made these a little bit longer as well. You can see the distance there. So I'm gonna glue these on, let it set up overnight, and uh, then tomorrow we will cut those slots back out. And that should make that area a lot better. Put the canopy back on a bunch of times. Very, very happy with the fit. I think it's gonna work out just perfectly the way it is. So that was a great upgrade. And there's also obviously now, when with this clipped in, there's zero movement in this middle area. So the canopy's not gonna move in or out, it's not gonna come up or down, so great little upgrade. All right, and just doing a little bit of wire cleanup here, so I plugged the wires in for the fuel pump. We also have the battery lead, which has to go towards the front of the plane, which is that way. So I just glued these on last night, and I'm going to uh, clip the wires into the little holders, and that'll help clean this front area up a little bit. All right, it's been 24 hours, guys, since I did this, and everything's nice and solid now with those pieces of carbon that are in place of the wood from before. So I'm gonna take my Dremel and re-groove these areas out now. All right, and there's a shot of the final product. We are back to the way we were before, but this time with carbon on the underside, not wood. All right, guys, that's the end of this miscellaneous stuff video. Uh, we got a lot done in this video though. We did the countersink on the wing bolts. We did the wing wiring harnesses on the fuselage side. Uh, we installed the tank high flow fittings. We did the clunks on the tank. We did the startup tray, the canopy tabs. So lots accomplished in this video. Definitely a successful video. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. If this is your first time coming across my videos and you haven't seen the previous videos in this diamond build, there is a link down below to the playlist for the Aviation Design Diamond Build. Check that out, start from the beginning. Uh, there's lots of good content in all of these videos. So thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great day, great evening, wherever, whenever you're watching this, and we'll see you in the next video.